Mercedes Benz is no longer the number one luxury car maker in the world. However, in India, it continues to rule the roost, and one of the cars that helped it do it is the first generation GLC SUV. Welcome to Car and Bike. My name is Girish, and here we have the second generation GLC. So just like a C-Class, the GLC has also grown and it now looks substantially different. If you look at the overall design, it's more hunkered down rather than upright as the previous generation model was. Look at the front, you get a much larger grille with a larger three-pointed star at the center and a single horizontal slat. The headlamps now fuse into the grille, but these are not the digital lights that are also available as an option in the international markets. Apart from auto headlamps, those were also able to project road signs on the road, which is not available even as an option in India. To hint at its off-road ability, the bumpers get chrome-plated underguards, both at the front and the rear. Now let us get to the side where you can really notice how the GLC has grown. The wheelbase is much longer now, which has increased the overall length of the GLC, which is why it looks more slippery. And Mercedes also says that it has been able to improve the aerodynamics. The coefficient of drag of this car is now 0.29 which was earlier 0.31 with the older generation GLC. So it's a much more sleeker in profile. Also get 19 inch wheels on this one. If you come at the rear, the tail lamps are wrapped around and stretch all the way. In some models, you can get a chrome bar as well. And it's a pretty simple design, but it looks nice and neat. And again, very hunkered down and hugging the road. It gets that kind of stance. A step inside the new GLC and you really know that you are inside a new car. While the earlier one was also well appointed, here it takes a lot of inspiration from the C-Class. Very similar layout. If you look at the dashboard, it's a two-step horizontal design with the central 12-inch, nearly 12-inch touchscreen, which, which has a very nice interface, very easy to use, very user-friendly, and also for the digital cluster. The look and feel is basically like a C-Class. You get three types of interiors. The one here is in brown, you also get in beige, and there is a black, an all black interior as well. Plus you get a panoramic sunroof, which was there, but in a slightly different form uh, with the older GLC. Let's go and check out how the rear is. Now at the rear too, as you can see, this is the, my position, uh, the driving position. I am around 5'8", and there is enough leg room. The car has actually narrowed down compared to the previous generation GLC. So three abreast will, is still a tight fit. It's best for two. So there's this center armrest. Not much action here. Most of the action is at front. Uh, the center armrest gets a small slot where you can put in your smartphone, although uh, it didn't take my smartphone. Maybe it needs a slightly slimmer one. If you press it again, of course you have the cup holders. The seats themselves, quite comfortable, well bolstered. Uh, the angle is a bit too straighter for my preference. However, I would have liked it to have a slightly bit more recline. Uh, the under thigh support is decent. However, if the bench could have been a little bit more, it would have been nicer. I would still love to drive this car rather than be chauffeur driven. Also in terms of uh, experience inside the cabin, two things which are very important and very practical and almost should be there in most cars. One is the AC of the GLC is pretty good. We've been using it entire day and the cooling has been really nice, which is not really expected uh, from a European car manufacturer. Also, the music system, this comes with a 15 speaker, 700 plus watt per master music system and its sound quality is really, really good and you enjoy it. It's very different and you know that it's from a luxury car. At launch, the GLC will come with two powertrain options, just like the previous model. So it is either available in a GLC 300 petrol engine or a GLC 220 diesel. What I'm driving here is a 300 petrol and it's quite reasonably powerful. 
The torque comes in easy. This is mated to a 9-speed gearbox. The engine is all new. The gearbox is a carryover. But it works pretty well. The power buildup, the acceleration is pretty smooth. You always get that sense of power while driving this GLC, which is a good thing. The agility is something that could probably have been better. The steering wheel is well weighted, but the assistance sometimes feels a bit off. Of course, this is not as agile as a GLC Coupe or a, an AMG GLC. However, for an SUV, it's right at point. Sitting in the car, the overall visibility is pretty decent, especially at the front and uh, at the side. The rear visibility, uh, the windscreen is a little smaller, so but could have been better. The ride quality is quite supple. In fact, I find it even better than the GLE, which is slightly bigger than this in terms of size. It is pretty pliant. Even under braking, it feels very composed, and that is a good advantage for having a GLC. And it is something that is associated with GLC. It's effortless, it's comfortable, and it is very convenient and easy to drive. It's able to adopt to either the fast highways or cramped city traffic conditions pretty easily and that is one of the reasons its ability to be an all-rounder is one of the reasons why it is so popular not just in India but around the world. One of the new things in this GLC is an integrated starter generator which is a battery powered unit and it, it essentially offers an additional boost of power and torque. This makes this car a mild hybrid Internationally, the GLC is also available as a pure plug-in hybrid, which gives it an electric-only range of as much as 130 kilometers. Unfortunately, that's not on sale in India yet. All Mercedes-Benz SUVs take inspiration by the mother of them all, the Mercedes-Benz G-Wagon. One of the things that the GLC prides on is the fact that it is actually quite capable off-road. The previous generation GLC was quite capable too. And this one even more because what Mercedes-Benz India has done is given the off-road package, which is an optional one internationally, but on the Indian GLC, it will come as standard. An off-road package also means that this car has more ground clearance than the previous generation GLC. And it is quite capable, even at slow speeds, it's able to crawl pretty easily. To help matters, you also have the transparent bonnet feature, which is again standard with this car in India. The transparent bonnet feature is a cool party trick up the GLC sleeve. This feature cleverly uses onboard cameras to stitch an image of the ground underneath the bonnet in a 360 degree view, making it even easier for the driver on the move. Not an all new feature though, as some rivals such as Land Rover and Lexus offer this feature on their SUVs as well. Well, officially the prices were yet to be announced. The new GLC is supposed to be priced around rupees 75 lakhs ex showroom. That's around 10% more than the older GLC. Now seems to be good value given the fact that it's bigger, has a slew of new features and also new engines which are more efficient and more refined. Now there's a saying that if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And that's exactly what Mercedes has successfully managed to do with the GLC. It's perfectly at home, whether at work or play. And that is one cofactor that had made it successful and looks like they managed to do it with the second generation GLC as well. well that's all from my side. Thank you for watching. My name is Girish. You're watching Car and Bike. If you like this video, do share and don't forget to subscribe to Car and Bike and hit the bell icon so that you don't miss any video. Thanks for watching.